Here is part two. If you have not seen part one, that is just how I file and prep my nails for a manicure. This is going to be the actual manicure part. So let's just get into everything that I use. You don't need all of these specific things, but um, these are the ones that I use and what has worked for me. The first thing that I have used since I've started doing my nails on my own is this Orly Bonder base coat. I um, really like this base coat. It's sticky, it dries fairly quickly, and it works really well. It's got a rubberized um, kind of texture, so it helps grip your polish. And I honestly haven't really used another base coat um, since I started doing my nails, so this is the only one that I use. Obviously you want a nail polish, and I decided to go with one that I feel like most people will have, the brand. I went with an Essie, and I'm gonna be using um, Peach Daiquiri today. This polish is one of my favorite springtime polishes, and it is just a really pretty kind of hot pink color, so I'm gonna be using that. And then for a top coat, I use this Wet n Wild Hard as Ice top coat. I really enjoy this one. Um, it's kind of hard to find, but you can get it on their website. Another top coat that I like to use, let me grab it, is this um, London Town Genius Gel top coat. I really like this one as well. It makes your polish last pretty, um, pretty long time, and you can actually get this one online, um, and I believe also in Ulta as well. So... Any kind of top coat, I like a quick dry top coat and both of these dry fairly quickly. And then the other thing that I use is a little bit of acetone. I put mine into this little pump bottle. I have this little cup and then a nail brush. Most of you guys have seen this if you've been following me or watched some of my other YouTube videos. But this is how I clean up my nails. Um, if I get some nail polish a little going a little crazy out of line, this is how I clean that up. And then like I said, I always have some tweezers and then I usually keep an orange stick just in case I get some nail polish on my skin I will just wipe that up and get it off my skin while it's still wet because that's a lot easier and then I showed in the last video once my nails are dry I love to use some kind of cuticle oil as well as a hand cream um, this is just one that I got in a fat fit fun box I really like it it smells really good and then this is another London Town product this is their cuticle oil that I really really enjoy it smells freaking amazing so since my nails are already prepped from the last video, I'm just going to go in with my base coat. Um, if you're having problems with your nail polish staying on or chipping, I would highly recommend a base coat. Um, and I definitely feel like this is kind of essential. I know that three different steps is kind of a lot for some people, but this is a really good way to keep your manicure lasting a lot longer. So you would just use the base coat just like every other um, nail polish. Just get some on your brush and paint on a coat. Try to do a fairly even coat. And then you will want to let this dry for a few minutes. Um, this one dries pretty quickly, so I don't usually have any issues with it. Um, and like I said in the last video, you really want to make sure that you've gotten everything off of your nail. You don't want to touch your nails a bunch um, before you put your base coat on because anything that's trapped underneath there could show through uh, to your polish and it could make your polish kind of lift um, or bubble if you have oils or anything on your nail. So I'm just going to let that dry for a few minutes and then come back in with polish and you can kind of see... Um, how shiny it is it'll dull down a little bit once it's dry typically when I'm doing my nails I will um, do both at the same time I'll paint base coat base coat first coat first coat um, just for this video I'm gonna do this hand later so I'm gonna have one manicured hand and one not and honestly that happens more times than you would think Sometimes I will be swatching and I will have this hand painted and then my boyfriend or family or something will be like, let's go eat and I'll go out with one hand painted and that's just how things go. Um, but yeah, so this hand I'm going to take care of a little bit later, but I did do the um, prep work on this hand from the same video that I posted earlier. All right, so it has been just a little bit. Like I said, I don't typically let it dry too, too much just because I feel like it... Um, it's really, it dries pretty quickly, so I don't need to let it dry all that long. 
Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to use an Essie polish just because I feel like this is a brand that a lot of people have. Um, and honestly, the differences in brushes for nail polish can really help or hurt your application. Essie is just now coming out with their um, wider brushes. This is one that is just their regular brush. So typically I'll get some nail polish on my um, brush. I will go as close as I can without touching my skin and then pull it back. And then I will do the same thing on both sides going fairly slowly and trying not to let the brush flick all around. You want to make sure that you have enough polish that you'll get an even application but not too much that it'll go everywhere. So typically what I will do is pull out this and wipe off one complete side. If it's a very thick polish or if it is a polish that um, has kind of a runnier formula, I will kind of just play around with it until I get the right amount. But typically you just want a little bead of polish because some of the polish from the wand will drip down. So if you wipe off one side, then usually you'll have enough. Um, so again, I'll just get as close as I can to my skin but not touch it and then pull straight back and then do the same thing on these sides. I will get as close as I can without touching and pull all the way around to the sides. And usually what you want to do is make sure that you're following like the shape of your nail and that'll really kind of make it look a lot better. You can see here that this is kind of like all cattywampus, like it's gone down further on this side. So what I'll do for my second coat is kind of just push some more polish on this side. But I never go all the way up to my skin. Um, when I was younger and before I did my nails and knew what was happening, that's what I would do. And honestly, it just makes it look like a mess. It doesn't make it look like you got your nails done professionally because there's nail polish all over your skin. And honestly, there's no reason for it to go all the way up to your skin it just doesn't it should only be on your nail it shouldn't be on your skin so there's no reason to have it go all the way up so you can see this one as well is not like a straight kind of even line so that's something that we would clean up with the acetone later but right now you just want to kind of try to keep it off your skin as much as possible and just push all the way up and then bring it around your nail on both sides. I really like doing the three stroke method. It's a lot easier to have an even application and then sometimes I'll just kind of spread it around and fix any of those areas that I feel like aren't exactly perfect. And again, same thing on the thumb. I will just get most of the polish off and then I will start in the middle and push all the way down. And then pull all that out. Obviously my thumb is a little bit bigger so I have to do more than that three stroke method. But I haven't dipped back into the polish. Sometimes with my thumb I do but this is a fairly um, medium formula so I'm able to get enough coverage just with that one bead of polish. If you're getting so much on your nail that it's covering everything you just need to keep wiping more off different formulas will give you different results on how much you need on your brush it just depends on the polish typically by the time I paint this hand and then paint this hand I can come back to that first nail and it's dry but since I'm waiting on this hand I'm going to give it a couple more seconds before I do my second coat I will typically always do a second coat even if the polish is opaque in one. Um, sometimes nail polishes will take three coats, it just depends on their formula, but I will almost always do at minimum two coats for my nail polish. Okay, I feel like it has been long enough, so we're going to go in with the second coat. And I'm going to wipe off that excess again. I have the same amount of polish. But I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to do one down the middle, two on the side. And with the second coat, I try to make the lines a little bit more even. Try to make sure that the polish goes on a little more even. And just make sure that that second coat looks a little more polished than the first one. Just because the first one doesn't really matter all that much. But the second one, you want to make sure that 
everything comes out nice because that'll be what shows. And I tend to do thicker second coats, so I am going back in for another bead of polish on this nail. And this is that one where I needed to kind of bring it down a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And like I said, you just want to try to even out this coat and make sure that it looks okay. I did get a little polish right there on my skin, so I'm going to take my orange stick and just wipe that off. And that's another thing we can get with the acetone at the end of the manicure. So I think that one of the number one questions that I have is how I keep the lines so um, like straight and even and I don't have a lot of stuff all around my skin and you saw when I was applying it that I tried to not touch my skin at all. So there is a little line on each nail that is technically nail but it's not painted. There is no reason for that to be painted. If anybody is in your business like that, I have said this for years, they should be paying your bills. So. As long as your nails look, I mean, I could stop here and I still feel like it's better than when I first started or better than when I was in high school and I was getting nail polish everywhere. But the one thing that I do to kind of make this look just a little bit more professional is after I put on my top coat, which we will do here in a second, I make sure to clean up around my nails. And sorry, I have a little bit of polish on my skin for my thumb. But the main thing that you want to just make sure is try to do... Um, People, I think, get scared of how much polish. They'll do super thin coats and then they have to keep putting polish on to cover up. If you do an even first coat and then a thicker second coat and you make sure that the polish stays even, you'll get this glassy effect and you won't have any brush strokes or anything in your nail polish. So make sure that you have enough on your brush to cover your nail and it will remain even. And I think that that kind of helps give that gel looking effect when it's even and it's not streaky. The other thing with the quick dry top coats that I recommend, um, this one doesn't technically say quick dry top coat, but I think that any top coat that dries fairly quickly is a quick dry top coat. The one thing that you want to do with these is actually apply it while your polish is still wet or tacky. The thing that these do is when they dry quickly, it comes in and it takes everything from your polish and it like sucks it up. So if you put your polish on and you're so close to your nail and then you put on a quick dry top coat, it shrinks it and sucks it up when it dries and then your polish could end up all the way up here instead of back where you first started it. So if you kind of put it on while it's wet, it helps it to not shrink even more if you would put it on while you were, um, while it was dry and then put it on, it'll shrink even more. I hope that that makes sense. Basically, I'm going to do the exact same thing with my top coat. I'm going to wipe off one side of it, but for my top coat, I tend to do a thicker coat and definitely have a lot more on there. I do not want the brush of my top coat to touch my nail at all. So I just kind of sloppily throw on top coat to make sure that it covers the whole nail and that everything is going to be sealed in. I don't typically wrap the ends. It just sort of depends on how I'm feeling. Um, if my nails are shorter, sometimes I wrap them, but that just, I don't really think that it makes a ton of difference, but it might for some people, it might just be my nails. But basically, if you just do the exact same thing, one down the middle, one on each side, and then this is what I mean by wrapping it, you can take the brush and do the end of your nail, and that'll help sort of lock all that in. But my brush from my top coat never touches my actual nail. The only thing that I'm moving around is that top coat. And you want to avoid doing too thick of a coat because then that's where you'll get bubbles. So you just have to find that middle line that works for your nail where you can get, oh, oh we got stuff on our nail. So let me see if I can get this out. So I didn't mean to do that, but basically I am just going to try to push that little bit down and then I'm going to put top coat on it because honestly, again, I, I don't, I don't care. The other way, I'll show you guys how I would fix it, but typically I would have just put top coat on that. 
But basically, so you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit. There's a little spot from where that was in my nail. And basically this is how I would fix it. I would get a little bit of polish on my, like a very, like less than if I was doing a whole coat. And then I would just do a little bead right over that and kind of flatten it out a little bit, just like that. And then it's basically gone. And then I will just do a whole nother coat over the whole nail so that it's all even. And then I'm gonna give that just one second and then I'll put my top coat on, but there, now that's gone. So, I don't remember what I was saying, but basically just get a bead of top coat, put it onto your nail, try not to make it too thick to prevent bubbles and don't make it too thin so then you get brush strokes in your polish. Um, and that is basically how I paint my nails. And if I, can get them looking like my pinky looks pretty good I probably won't do any cleanup on that nail um, but my middle finger has a little bit of a jagged edge right here so I think that I will do some cleanup on that when I first started I had to clean up every single manicure every single nail because it was just it was just a lot like it was hard to keep up with how much polish you have going everywhere like it was just a lot I felt like I was a mess um, I've painted my nails two to three times a week for the past three years, so practice really does help, um, and it just kind of makes it a lot easier to know the shape of your nail, as well as how much polish your nail will fit, um, depending on the brand, because that does change depending on the brand and depending on, honestly, just the formula of that polish, because Essie has some older ones that are not the best but they have some newer ones that are amazing they have some old ones that are amazing and some new ones that aren't the best it really just depends on the individual polishes more than anything so if you find a brand that that formula works for you um i would just keep buying it honestly opi is probably one of the easiest nail polishes i think to work with because their formulas are fairly consistent the only issue is their color range isn't my favorite but that's just personal preference. So I hope that all this has made sense and it's actually helpful and I'm not just sitting here rambling, but I feel like I'm thinking of things as I sit here. So usually I will let my nails dry a little bit before I go in with the um, acetone. I don't like to let them dry all the way because then um, you could get some pulling on your nail. I'm trying to open this acetone. So I will take my little acetone cup and this step is completely um, unnecessary, really. I could just walk out like this and I would feel completely fine, but I wanted to show you guys how I clean my nails up. And also, if you do have an issue painting your nails, um, I wanted you to know how to clean it up. Let me know in the comments if the next video you want me to show you like a more messy manicure and how I would clean that up because I can do that too because I did that for years. <laughs> I had to clean up my manicure every time. So I'm just putting some of that acetone into the cup and then I'm taking my brush. This is just an e.l.f. concealer $1 brush. You can get them at the store or online. I went online when they had a 50% off sale and ordered like 20 of them. They're, they're a dollar so they were 50 cents. So I spent a lot of money and just ordered a bunch of brushes. And yeah, so I'm gonna get some on my brush and it's basically the same thing as the nail polish. You don't want so much that you're gonna flood your nail with acetone, but you want enough to where the brush isn't going to drag on your nail or the polish. So like I will pull my nail aside right here, or my skin, I'll pull my skin aside right here and there's just a little bit of polish right there that I don't love. So I'm going to grab that, but there is a little bit too much acetone on there and it's kind of flooded down to here. It won't mess up your nail too much, but if you do it a lot, it could. So I'm just going to try to remove that that was sitting on my skin. But as far as this nail goes, where I kind of wanted to clean up that line, I get my acetone and then I just like squeeze it on the side to get some of it off. And then I will... Just kind of swipe it in the same direction and kind of clean up that line. A lot of the times I'll have to do it this way so that I can see that area a little bit better. A little more stuff. I don't want my 
acetone brush to be dry because it will drag in that nail polish. But basically, I just want to go around and clean up that little bit. So now that part's gone. And this just really helps your manicure look a little cleaner and a little more professional because it's going around the same shape as your nail. If you had your polish going around everywhere, then it would kind of be like, oh, she's obviously I'm wearing nail polish. There's no way around that. But it would just kind of be like, okay, she's clearly got extra stuff going on on her nail. You kind of want it to follow your natural shape and then it just looks a lot better. Honestly, I think the only other thing that I want to clean up is my thumb. Like I said, comment and let me know if you want me to film like a video where I show you um, a messier or a, a typical manicure that I've seen. And if you want me to do that, I will um, film a video of me cleaning up sort of a little bit of a messier manicure. But yeah, this is how I paint my nails. And the last video, if you watch that one, is how I prep my nails to paint them this way. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about this video, so I just wanted to share both of them with you. Again, I have a few on my channel already of me painting my nails, um, but they're not as uh, informative as this, I guess. So if you have any questions, let me know. Also, if you want to see that other video, let me know. And then if there's any other questions that you have or any other full videos that I can film, let me know. I hope that you enjoyed, and here is my manicure.